Alrighty, this week's newsletter is on procedures and steps to properly indicate your bell housing into your motor. So there's, there's some transmission companies out there that uh, have a strict guidelines on what they recommend for those specifications to, to uphold their warranty of their transmission. Especially if you're, you're kind of running the motor pretty hard, doing some road course racing, things of that nature, higher RPM. Uh, this particular company here sends out a sheet, and we did this for our customer, and has these uh, high performance 7500 RPM plus bell housing alignment specification. They're, what they're asking for is concentric, plus or minus two and a half to five thousandths, parallel, plus or minus half a thousandths to a thousandths. And what that is, basically, the parallels is the, is the specification from the mating surface of the bell housing of the transmission via where it bolts onto the block. So that's basically so the transmission is run parallel to the to the basically the flywheel. Um, and concentric is the where the, the transmission bolts into the bell housing, that hole there runs concentric to the center line of the crankshaft. So those are what they're really worried about. So we're going to kind of give you a, a brief summary of kind of how to correct those things, what goes on. This particular customer sent in, we had sold him a bell housing in the past. He had ordered another motor, uh, you know, much much uh, higher horsepower and stuff. So he sent the bell housing back. It's a quick chain bell housing, which is a very, very, very high quality bell housing. So we first, we bolted it up basically checked it and it was not within specifications okay so I think if I remember right it was uh, eight or nine thousandths uh, uh, parallel out and twelve thousandths concentric so at that point in time what we did is QuickTime uh, puts this powder coating on there real nice uh, powder coating but unfortunately it's on all the surfaces too so um, basically we took it off and cleaned all that powder coating off and everything and then rebolted it back up uh, lucky for us, it fell within that spec then. So that just kind of goes to show you, really their machining process was really great, great. Naturally, they couldn't control the quality of the powder coating, the thickness of the thing of that nature. So that's one thing you want to make sure is all, when you're, when you're talking about these kind of tolerances, you got to have everything perfectly clean. So, so what we're going to do is kind of give you, let's just say, some examples if it doesn't fall within those specifications and how to, how to correct that. So. Uh, first of all, we'll, we'll tell you about the concentricness of it. So uh, there's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, and one of the ways that people talk about is offset dowel pins. And these are the dowel pins here. So basically what they have is two dowel pins that are offset in, in numerical, let's say, 3,000s, 5,000s, 10,000s, whatever that might be. So then you figure out where you're at uh, on, on the outer roundness and basically uh, put those dowel pins in accordingly to that way. It is a little bit touchy on doing it. Uh, can you get it perfect? It's very, very hard to. You can get it probably within those specs, um, but uh, it is not the, the, the best way of doing it. Uh, there's companies out there that sell what they call these, these dowel pins here. So what this is is a longer dowel pin and this bushing. This bushing fits very, very snug over the dowel pins. This dowel pin will now stick out past the bell housing. So what you do is take these holes here and basically along them, you know, maybe 20 thousandths oversized so you can move that bell housing around. So you bolt it back up with the longer bushings in there, bell, dowel pins, and then you tap out around the bell housing and you can get it perfect. You can get it really, really nice job that way. Cinch it down and then take these, these bushings here and slip them on there and then TIG weld them onto the bell housing. Then every time you put that bell housing off and on, it's, it's precise. Uh, really not, makes a nice job on it. So that's how you do that. The other one is a little more difficult, the parallel stuff of it. So basically what you want to do is, is check it, okay, in every 90 degrees. And some of the problems people run into is they forget that there's crank in play in it. So what we recommend doing is, is check it every 90 degrees, rotate it, stop it and then push the crank forward or aft every time the same way so you're repeating that so there's you know there's two and a half to four thousandths in play in it so naturally you're gonna you could be without that without that spec in a heartbeat so you definitely got to keep that in mind so do that basically check it out so let's say it and it's out so what we do here is basically we'll take it over to our mill and I'll show you here we got this custom cutter here uh, it's a carbide tip pretty good size cutter and what we'll do is we'll face off the 
mating surface where it bolts the block and then we'll flip it over and we'll face off the surface that bolts the transmission and make those two surfaces parallel. So now we know that those two surfaces are parallel. We'll bolt it back onto the motor and uh, we'll check it again. So that's not saying that uh, the block surface is parallel to the flywheel. So uh, basically what we'll do is do another, another sweep of it uh, and uh, we'll put a nice road map on it whatever that is, let's say it's three thousandths to, to zero, so we want to correct that then. So basically we'll put it back up on the mill and indicate that in shimmet wise to where we, we repeat that road map, okay, and then basically cut it. So now we're cutting it uh, an angle into that basically to compensate for the, uh, the block. So that's really the best way of doing it. What some people do or what you can do, if you don't have these kind of equipments, is they shim it. Uh, we don't really feel that that's the most accurate way of doing it. The shims can come out. There's just basically, unless you do a, a full size shim, there's always air gap then. Naturally, if you're going to shim this out here, there's going to be an air gap from that point to that point. So if, if that's the only way you can do it, then that's, that's a good way of doing it uh, at that point in time. So if you have a ring like this that has a, a ring in it, you really want to mark that ring. Uh, we usually do, we'll die them up and we'll punch mark it to where you're always putting that ring back in there uh, the same way. You can rotate this ring to see if the, your, your concentricness is in that ring and sometimes get it dialed in. We were able to do that with this bell housing here. So um, a few little tidbits there on that kind of situation. So basically that's it. Now you're, you're, you've got within the manufacturer specification, he's happy, uh, you're happy, you know, everything will be good. Um, so basically we, we uh, appreciate you watching this, this little video. If you got any suggestions on uh, upcoming newsletters, things you'd like us to research out for you, do a news clip on, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us here at Prestige. If you're interested in uh, having us do this process for you, uh, give us a holler and we'll be more than happy to do it. So have a great week. Thanks.